So, in case you haven't seen The Dead Poet Society, there's a scene here where their teacher, played by Robin Williams, gives his class the homework of each writing an original poem of their own. Poetry, for him, is something of total passion and emotion, the attempt to either understand life or to explode in a kind of fit of wonder at how impossible it is to understand. And he's spent a lot of his classes so far trying to inject that same passion into his students for them to see poetry not just as something dull and stiff and slightly nerdy, but it's full of life and energy. He wants them to try and write poetry because of how wonderful it could be to know that with nothing more than a pen and paper, you can create something moving, genuine, inspiring, something above all beautiful that no one else has ever made before. He wants to give his students that. When it comes to reading out their poems, one student steps up and reads The cat sat on the mat. Then smugly enjoys the moment of strolling back to his seat. And my question is, have you ever been like that in school? I'm pretty sure all of us have been exactly the same at some point. I can remember when I was in year 9 at school for art lessons. We suddenly got this giant barn they'd built where we all had our own easels. Like, that was our spot for good. We could leave whatever paintings we were working on sitting there. We could come back anytime during break or lunch after school, even on weekends because we had a dedicated art teacher if we wanted to work on it. You know, we'd been given this fantastic chance to make art, but when we had art lessons, me and my mates spent half the time sitting at the back of the class playing poker with a deck of cards I'd brought in. Because, you know, that was both easier and cooler than daring to give art a shot. Somehow it's not cool to be passionate, somehow it's better to just sit at the back watching everyone else actually achieving something and discovering talents they never knew they had and to just sit there sneering a bit and going, nah, I ain't taking part in that. The thing is, when you care, when you admit that you care anyway, you open yourself up to possible criticism. The students in that class who really tried hard to write poems, they could be completely crushed if they get laughed at enough while reading them out. How often do we experience that threat in smaller situations? You know, when you feel passionate about a film or a certain band and someone else sneers like, oh, you like them? I think it's shit. Or, you know, someone's making the effort to get in shape, but they get laughed at for being too fat to run very far or too weak to lift heavy weights. Or maybe you just have a hell of a lot of interesting thoughts and ideas stashed away somewhere in your brain, but you're too afraid to ever share them. This isn't really an essay or anything so much as me just rambling in front of a microphone, but the point I'm sort of rambling towards is that it's so easy to hide our passion, our cares about whatever, about anything. And when we all do that, the world becomes a much duller, empty, disconnected place. Not only do we fail to express ourselves, to discover our hidden talents and thoughts and everything else, but we also fail to connect with other people expressing theirs. We fail to connect with anyone on a deeper level if it happens enough because no one is expressing anything and when someone does they get shot down and that can happen a lot at school at that age there is a kind of competitive animalistic culture where you're looking to get one over on other people and we're all still a bit insecure so it can happen that people get shot down there but then when you grow up and some of that insecurity fades away and people don't people don't really shoot you down in that same way anymore not after school but by the time you reach that age, you've probably gotten used to people shooting you down all throughout school and you've gotten familiar with hiding all your passions a bit and just pretending you don't really care. I remember there was a kid a few years above me who made a point of never running, except during sport, obviously. <laughs> but, like, he was late for his bus once, he got on my bus, and he didn't run to catch it. He just casually walked and ended up missing it. And back then everyone thought he was cool, but... If you think about it, that's so stupid. I mean, he missed his bus home just because he was too insecure to run, to be seen running, to look like he was slightly worried about missing his bus. I mean, that is mad, surely. Um, we get used to hiding ourselves enough and we become a bit like um, Todd in the film, which is exactly what I was like, I think, really, and sort of still am, full of all sorts of interesting stuff, I think, and could say, if only, um, I, I kind of had the voice, if only I felt able to speak, but I tend not to, so mostly I stay quiet and never show it. The big thing in my life has always been writing. I've spent years of my life in my bedroom writing, working on story ideas, but I never speak about any of it to anyone. Some people don't even know that's what I do. And I'm not a published author because, well, I, I never 
dared to think anyone would be interested. I never dared to try and find a publisher to put a book out there. I was too afraid. So whenever I finished the story, I'd I'd feel good about it for a bit. Well, sometimes, unless it was bad. But I'd feel good about it for a bit, leave it, forget, and then just start work on another one. And that was it. And to tell the truth, it's only very recently I have dared to try and put my work out there. Right now I'm in the process of finding an agent, and hopefully I do find one, but, you know, it takes time. And this channel, this in itself, has been an experience of me discovering that I do have a voice. Not, um, put less dramatically than that, let's hope. <laughs> but, you know, because this sort of stuff I'm talking about, I've never, I'd never share any of these thoughts with anyone in real life. But when I wrote that comment on the Good World Hunting video, for example, I had no idea anyone would really read it. Obviously, I hoped a few people might appreciate it. But I was mostly writing for myself, um for the interest of taking the time to analyse the video and understand it better. I've written similar comments on other videos in the past, believe it or not, <laughs> and most of them never got any likes at all. And that never bothered me because I, you know, I never ma imagined anyone would listen anyway. The fact that so many people who you have means a lot. But that's not what I'm on about here. I'm on about the importance of showing your passion showing what you care about no matter how many times you get shot down it's better to express rather than to fear expression and keep it buried inside because i think when you hide your expression you kind of limit yourself and who you can become you know i, I think sincerity is deeply important without it we'd all regress into a cold state of apathy where life altogether starts to feel just meaningless and <laughs> life feels meaningless enough nowadays and emotion and just that raw liveliness that Mr. Keaton goes on about is kind of what gives life its meaning. Uh, but look, th this isn't a proper video, if you haven't already guessed. I'm still working on the Good Will Hunting one. I was hoping to have it done this weekend, but it's a lot longer than I imagined it would be, which means it's taken a lot longer to edit. So, you know, I, I just thought I'd quickly ramble into a mic for a bit and at least so I can say I uploaded something this week. And Applechip, who holds the record for being the first person ever to comment on my channel, suggested I do a video about the Dead Pirate Society, so just to address you Applechip, this isn't that video, <laughs> don't worry. I will do something proper and more substantial on the film when I get the chance. You know, this is just a quick ramble I thought I'd upload because I watched it earlier and it got me thinking a bit. Um, so yeah. Thank you for your continued support. You don't have to like or subscribe, but please leave a comment, whatever it is, and yeah, see you next time.